anything that we do again in drawing is always going to come back to emphasizing structure. So one of the most interesting ways of doing that, at least I think, is to use um, cross hatching and cross contour lines to create that sense of depth. So we're going to work into a new layer and we're going to do some cross hatching uh, with that. So cross hatching is um, based on this idea if um, of that let's say there's a plane going back in space right that if we want to emphasize that movement back in space we can hatch lines that go back in space as well and we can kind of space them closer together as they get further apart and so on so the lines themselves create a little bit of space um, the thing that you want to think about when choosing what direction to go is is the is the plane like on the nose or something is it going away from you or towards you um, if it's going away from you you may want to hatch this direction right and then your cross hatching can change and evolve with the nose plane um, you know the middle section of it kind of turns and bends so we may use different cross-hatching cross directionality to kind of change things. Um, and you can see how that emphasizes one direction of the plane and then also all of the bends and, and changes. You can also curve them so that the hatch lines describe uh, a different sense of space. And you can mix curve and straight. There's no real rule to it, but we'll go through and uh, see what we can come up with. So the light source basically is from the left, so that kind of throws the shadow onto like this area right here, right? So this is all going to wind up being in shadow, but we don't want a big ugly blob like that. Instead, we want something a little more elegant. So again, I think we should just start with the nose um, and go from there. So we're going to do some things to emphasize the form. So we know that the nose goes this way, and it bends around this way. And those forms change and shift. And we know that overall the nose is kind of just going away from you. So we can use very similar marks here, and we can continue those marks in through the eye and run them all the way up into the eye socket and then we can you know bend change and curve cross hatch marks as they go around then as the plane shifts we want to we also want to make our cross hatch line shift so that we can track those changes now there's a little bit of light getting spilled on this area in our reference photo if we turn it back on. So we don't want to deepen that area too much. We want to make sure that some of this gets gets preserved as light. So this area in here is going to be fairly dark. We want to be sure that we can preserve that. We can actually get some shading uh, and some contour into the eyeball itself. and under the eye as well. So here in the eye, you'll notice that the plane kind of shifts around like this if we were to kind of square it off. So that means the direction of the line will kind of have to shift to describe that. So that's why the curvature switches from uh, one side of, uh, from one side of the eye, under the eye to the other. Then, um, over here, we can kind of do some stuff with the uh, with the lip. We've already begun on that process, but we can continue it a little bit further. We can go under the lip and start to do some work there. We can work into the upper lip a little bit. 
we can work into the nose. Work into the chin some. Then um, we have several things going on here. We have, generally speaking, the side of the face um, more or less goes along a direction this way, right? Kind of going away from us. So we can run lines back in space through the whole thing. That kind of makes things pretty easy. And then what we can do is we can evolve the uh, crossing uh, lines to describe the form a little bit better. So down here on the chin where they bend down, we can change them. We can go up here change the direction slightly, make tr some transitional marks. We can change it around the cheekbone a little bit more, in cut on the side of the eye socket. And then we can send it back in a different direction when we get above that. So we've done a lot of work here, We can, but we need to go into some of the details, get into the ear a little bit, make sure that those forms kind of get described, then work into the neck, make sure the sternomastoids get described and everything there. We can run lines down along the neck like that, and then evolve and cross them. If you're working with pen, you really only have line to work with, so this is an essential technique uh, that you need to know how to, how to use, otherwise you're kind of uh, you'll be kind of stuck pretty quickly. And we can work into the light side a little bit to just describe some form. Since this isn't really about light and shadow yet, it's just describing form, we can uh, work on both sides of the, of the drawing without changing the sense of lighting yet. And on this side, we'll kind of approach it where there's, only, where there's not really many cross-hatch lines, there's just hatch lines. So there we've kind of created a pretty interesting image set to work with here. All right, so that's kind of, if we take the underlayer away, that's kind of a, a pretty interesting approach to creating form. You know, it is possible to do drawings just with the hatch lines and eliminate the contour, and you still get the hint of what this figure would look like. But if we go back and we turn our reference photo on, we've kind of described a lot of what's going on with the form. So one of the things that um, that you want to leave till last is actually creating the um, any kind of actual f like flat areas of shadow or larger areas of shadow. And then the very last step is when you decide on your final contour. So in the next couple of parts, we'll go over that.